Hello everybody, uh, welcome to another weekly analysis for F45 trading. Uh, we're looking at the week of um, Monday, March 5th to Friday, uh, March 9th. So a couple of things on this week. Um, we've got some economic news coming out. Uh, so you got to be careful trading here. Um, there's going to be several uh, news events later on in the week. And I'm just going to bring up an economic calendar. If you give me one second here. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this a short video today as well too. Keep it under uh, 15 minutes if possible. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to uh, draw your attention to a few things. Now there's a ton of Euro news. Uh, coming in for Monday, a little bit of pound dollars from services, MP, uh, PMI, and um, some ISM non-manufacturing, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's some Aussie news as well too late Monday. So um, could be a couple of good setups. There could be some good movements coming um, in the way of uh, uh, volatility tomorrow. So there could be a couple of good setups that we're looking at now. Uh, Tuesday really settles down. A um, little bit of news late in the day for the uh, pound and uh, some low and medium impact for the uh, US dollar. These FOMC guys are speaking all day long, um, pretty much all, all through the week, I think. Uh, coming into Wednesday, um, there's some news for the CAD here. Uh, Canadian dollar and then uh, crude inventory, inventory numbers obviously are on Wednesday. And we've got some non-farm equipment setups. Um, employment changes and Thursday we've got some euro, some high impact euro here. Uh, a little bit later, more into New York session, we have this euro uh, news there, and then some yen on, and that's tentative uh, later on in the day for uh, Thursday. And then Friday, uh, we come into non farm on Friday so there won't be anything going on on Friday obviously and even Thursday into trading um, typically what we see uh, the day before um, whoops up here uh, typically what we see the day before on Thursday is price really trades in a range and, and sort of consolidates on Thursday so there probably won't be a lot happening on Thursday either uh, the days of the week that uh, we're going to be trading are going to be Monday and Tuesday for sure uh, maybe even Wednesday if we see a nice setup happening, but there are uh, a couple of big news events for uh, the US dollar and for the Canadian dollar as well too, so we may want to sit on the sidelines on Wednesday um, for those two respective uh, currencies anyway, but uh, that's not to say that there isn't going to be something uh, that we'll be looking at on Wednesday, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I think all of the trades that will be taken this week will be early on in the week, so uh, with that being said, I'm going to uh, jump into the charts here quickly. So the U.S. dollar index, uh, we're going to start with. Um, so you can see here price, um, <clears throat> I'll just kind of jump out to a longer time frame. Uh, we've really kind of broken out of this sort of uh, downward trending um, uh, directional uh, bias here. As you can see, we had a nice sell-off and then price came down, uh, double bottom down here, and it's moved up nicely from there. And it's actually broken a couple of levels, very key significant levels that we had called last week. Uh, this one here being the first level, this uh, at 90-30 uh, level here, it crushed through it and actually came up and grabbed some of the uh, liquidity above this level as well too, uh, which was quite nice to see. And it traded off last Thursday and Friday. Now we're back into this small consolidation range. I know we got a lot of shrapnel on this chart here and I'll, I'll clean it up here in a minute for you, but I just kind of want to identify a couple of levels. Uh, so <clears throat> my eyes are going to be on this one here, uh, really it, this down candle here, if this gets broken and we have price close lower, so if uh, Monday and Tuesday is trading, if we have price come in and close lower, then we're going to start to see uh, price come down into here and want to uh, tie up some of the liquidity uh, that's resting, uh, some of the sell stops that's resting underneath here. We're going to want to see price come down into this level here. Uh, but I'm actually expecting to see rejection at our current levels. Uh, like I say, price traded up nicely, took up, took the highs out, and actually traded up. I thought we were going to get just a poke above here, and then we were going to trade back down in the consolidation range. Uh, but price nicely traded up higher than here. Uh, so what I would be looking at would kind of be like a, a break and retest sort of strategy in here. <clears throat> price to break out, uh, come back down to a logical level, and then continue higher. Uh, so 
I have said it uh, several times um, before in my live sessions and my, my pre-recorded videos uh, that price has, uh, I believe in my mind, come to a pretty significant shift happening here and you can start to see that shift happening uh, right around uh, the middle of February here. Um, by price coming down and, and taking the liquidity below the market that was created here and then running um, higher, it kind of leads me to believe that I think we're going to see higher prices ensue in the U.S. dollar. Now, the U.S. Feds have come out and raised interest rates, so that uh, in turn also strengthens the dollar as well too. Uh, so we could be looking for higher highs uh, in the future. Now, our first one comes in uh, at 91.50, this blue line that I have here, and that's basically this old consolidation range back up in here. Um, I'm going to be looking for prices to trade up higher into there. Now, what is going to eliminate that idea, if we break through this consolidation range right here and trade lower, then again, we're going to come back down to these levels down here, and I would expect the... Um, uh, the highs of this candle here to get tagged off at, um, which come in at uh, 88.90 basically. But I don't think we're going to, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Again, price coming in uh, to this consolidation range, I would expect a, a pop from here and a run higher. If it breaks down lower than here, then we're going to see prices lower. So we're going to watch for that early uh, in some Monday and Tuesdays trading. And who knows, FM, uh, FOMC on Friday, it may do that. Uh, so what we could happen is we could have price um, run higher in early in the week. Uh, price could run up into, the, into here and then FOMC could then come in and then sink prices lower from there. I don't know where price is going to trade <clears throat> after it trades up into this consolidation range, but I think this is on our radar for this week. I believe price will probably get up into here uh, if not this week, for sure next week, um, and then continue higher. But like I said, once it gets to the, this blue line here, I don't know where we're going from there. We're going to have to watch price if it wants to chop and consolidate, um, reject and trade lower, or just push through like it did here, right? So we got to watch for that. Um, but I think we're going to see higher prices, and what will negate that again is if it breaks through this um, 89 um, you know what, you could call it 89.50, I would say, like the low of this, or the close on this candle comes in, <clears throat> excuse me, at uh, 89.75, so if price breaks below 89.75 into 89.50, uh, and I, I don't just mean a wick down and then a rejection, I mean the candle, like Monday or Tuesday's candle would actually have to close below that, uh, then that would mean, I believe in my mind, that we're probably going to trade lower. But if it just stabs through and then rejects, we get a wick, uh, then I would expect prices to trade higher. So we'll see how Monday's candle opens up, uh, Sunday's trading. Um, we're a couple hours away from market open here now. Uh, so we'll see how that looks going forward. Uh, but if we are expecting higher prices on the pound, uh, the, the U.S. dollar, <clears throat> excuse me, I would expect lower prices on the uh, foreign currency pairs that it's crossed with. Um, the one I'm going to be talking about here uh, mainly is the pound dollar. So I think what we could see, I'd like to see price run up a little bit into early trading, early weekly trading, and, and really do this, run up into this 89.55 level, 89.50, 89.55, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'd like to see rejection happen. And um, this level here, this first level, um, 136.55, that's just this old high over here. That would be my first target of the week. Uh, and then the second coming in at uh, 135.90. So a couple hundred pips lower than where we're currently trading now. Um, and again, we've had a nice breakdown on the, on the pound dollar. And I've been talking about this area back in here um, and this little area in here that I think um, we'll want to see, uh, price will want to see get trade to uh, before we continue higher. I am bullish on this. But again, I, I, you know, I think the, the highs, the old Brexit highs, they're going to erase these eventually. Uh, but we need to trade a little bit lower before that happens. And to be honest with you, I just want to bring up this pair here, this Euro GBP pair, um, and talk about this for just a minute. Now, obviously, the, the US <clears throat> dollar, I think we are going to go higher, which will create softer prices in foreign currencies. But we, what we could see here, the reason I bring up the Euro GBP, uh, price has been trading in this nice consolidating level here. If we see prices go lower in this uh, pair, that's going to drive the pound dollar uh, higher, and that's really where I think we could see prices go. So uh, I'm going to be watching for that, but I think for this week trading anyway, um, I think we could see this happen. Um, now, if price breaks 
the 139.20 level, this level here, and closes higher than this level, um, then the idea of this going lower is going. Now, again, it could just trade out of the gate Monday, Tuesday, come lower, tag these, and then I would expect prices to go higher. Uh, but if we start trading out stronger uh, to begin the week, I would look for prices to come up to this 138.50, 138.55, somewhere in around there, um, you know, plus or minus 20 pips, uh, and then trade softer. If we don't see that happening, um, then I'm going to look for 139.20 level. And if prices uh, want to continue higher and continue to look strong from there, uh, we'll be looking at higher highs from there and potentially these levels up here to get broken. Um, but I don't think we're going to get there. Uh, I think price has been trading fairly soft. And again, with the strength of the U.S. dollar, I think we're going to see prices roll over and continue softer, at least for this week anyway. So uh, we're going to be watching for that. And again, with that news coming out, um, there is some uh, pound sterling news coming out on Monday uh, right here, the services PMI. This could be the one that uh, sort of uh, rolls price over for us. Uh, so if price starts trading out of the gate stronger, I'd be looking for that news event at um, 4.30 a.m. New York time to be the driver uh, to, to kind of break it and, and start running it down from there. Uh, and there's really no other pound news until uh, Tuesday. We have a, a, another high impact news early, early on in London. Um, so we'll be watching for that as well. So there's two. If we don't get a set up Monday on this, uh, we'll probably get it on Tuesday. So watch for that to come out. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, Bitcoin, I'm going to just discuss this real quick. And I've got, I threw another uh, uh, cryptocurrency in here as well, um, Ethereum, uh, just because uh, we've had a couple of users request a few more cryptos. Uh, and the beauty part is actually, and I just want to bring this to your attention, if you guys are looking for some uh, decent brokers to trade with, the one that I had found that has a nice um, a coverage of cryptos as well too, they just updated a lot of their listings, is Vantage FX, and um, the only reason I bring them up, I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that, uh, but they just added several nice um, uh, Bitcoin, obviously, uh, Dashcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Ripple as well, too, to their um, product offerings, their, their feeds, so um, nice uh, nice selection, and, and you get to trade, trade those with MT4, which is a great platform to trade off of, in my opinion, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, Bitcoin, I've uh, got a couple of levels on here that I'm watching, so we've had price, obviously, <clears throat> On Bitcoin trade very very soft, and I think that I personally think that we're going to see softer prices. Uh, but what I think we could see, and I'm surprised we didn't get it on this run up here. I want to see these prices, these highs. See what this X is right here. There's a ton of liquidity um, right in that area, and I think they're going to want to sweep that before they go lower. So really, this 11,000 level here is going to be uh, what's going to tell us what's going to happen. Uh, if price continues higher, then we're going to see this 11,800 and possibly 12,000 broken. And they're going to come up in here and grab the liquidity above these levels in here, this consolidation range in here. Um, and I would expect price to reject at the 12,800 level. If price trades through 12,800, uh, then we could be seeing higher prices on Bitcoin. But uh, we... I, and I don't want to call this resistance, right? I don't think that this is what it is. I think it's just sort of trapping traders um, who are trying to short this market. You know, they're going short here. Everyone's thinking this is resistance, and then they're going to rip it through and um, and take all the liquidity out for all the short traders. They could wick into it and then drop it from there. And I've got a couple levels below here, uh, sub 6,000 and uh, below 9,000 here that I would be looking for reactions to happen at. Um, so I think uh, short term... I, we could see prices, now again, this rate at the level we're at right now, it's 11,000. If we don't see price rolling over, then I think we could see it hit um, above 11,800, and that's where that liquidity is sitting. Um, so I'll be watching for that early in the week, and I will put out a signal. If price comes up and wicks into here, I'm going to put out a signal, and we'll look for lower prices. And I, this would be my first target, this 9,000 level right in here. And if price breaks through there, then we'll be looking for uh, this level down here to get tagged. Uh, but it's really, we're really going to be able to tell what uh, which direction we're going to be going in here if this level gets broken. And if they close higher than here, um, then I'd be looking for a um, kind of a, a break, retest, and, and long entry um, for the signal um, into this week. So we'll see where that gets us. Um, and we should see that happen probably Monday, Tuesday of this week. So we'll watch for that. Uh, overall, though, I mean... I. 
I'm still bearish on this. Um, I don't think this rally in here, I think this is kind of a false rally uh, just to come up and grab the liquidity above here. And then I think they're going to sink it. So th that, this really is what I think they're going to do. Um, kind of have a false rally and then and then do this and grab the liquidity under here. Because you look at this, price has come down, traded down, took out a lot of long positions here, obviously. Uh, and they've been slowly trading up. Now everyone here is looking, let's get long, let's get long, let's get long. And they haven't come back to get any of the liquidity other than the short little uh, drop here. Um, and I think they're going to trap long traders and get them in thinking we're going to see a run higher. So everyone's going to be stacking up their longs. They're going to come in, they're going to tag everybody going short and drop it and then take out all those long positions on their way down. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. But what will negate that again is if uh, this 12800 level gets tagged and uh, and price closes up higher than we're going to be looking up at, uh, at areas into here. So you could see bullish action from there. So that's that's Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, uh, got a couple levels on here marked out. Nice sort of uh, downtrend here. Uh, same kind of idea as Bitcoin. Not quite as uh, exaggerated though. Uh, a lot of wicks, so a lot of movement, a lot of volatility in this. Um, now, we are kind of in a nice sort of little um, area here, but we're in right in the middle of this big this big move right here. We're right in the middle of this, basically. Uh, price tagged off the 50% level of this, uh, and I'm talking this low right here to this high. Uh, price tagged off the 50% level here and did not want to show any willingness to continue higher, and we've traded softer now. Uh, we're right in the middle of the range here, so it, it's, there's really no level to key off of right now. Um, I'd want to see price move one way or another um, above or below these two levels right here before we can start making calls on this one. Uh, so the 800 level and then uh, this 950 level here. If price breaks this one and closes higher than this one, we're going to be looking for higher prices. If price trades lower than this, uh, and really you could pretty much say almost 800. Um, if price trades lower than that level here, then we're going to be looking for prices to, to continue softer and we'd be looking for these lows to run out here. Um, so that's uh, why I've got the FIB on there. I just kind of wanted to show you sort of some levels that I was looking at here. We're right trading in, in, into the middle of this and it's right at the 50% level. So price could really go either way. Um, if you are running off of a, 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 you know, a bearish, uh, you know, see this downtrending line here, if you're running off of that, which I'm not really putting a whole lot of faith in, um, I would be looking for price to do this. You see this little area I have uh, marked up in here? I'd be looking for price really to do this. Come up, tag into it, and then drop lower. That's kind of what I'm looking for price to do. Um, so I have that level highlighted in here just because uh, I want to see what price does. And really it's about the 900 level. Um, I'm interested. Whoops. This level right here, I'm, I'm interested. I, you know, I, and, and plus or minus, it's it's you know within 10% of this level here. Uh, but these these uh, this little consolidation range in here, I'm interested to see if price rejects off of there. I think we're going to go lower, and I think this 800 level is going to get tagged and wiped out, and then we're going to go lower from there. Um, but th that's kind of the level. If this 900 level gets broken and, and closed above, uh, then they're going to be looking for the highs at 95, uh, 950. And then we'll, we should see higher prices from there. So we'll watch for that. Um, again, no signal on this one yet. But we'll, 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 I'll, keep, I'll keep this one on, on the radar uh, for early in the week and see if something sets up. Uh, crude oil real quick. Uh, we've seen a couple of nice wicks here, which um, typically signifies uh, rejection. Um, price failed to get above the $6,400 level, uh, sorry, $64 level here. And... Um, it traded softer now. I'm going to be watching for price to see what it does at the 6260 level. If it breaks through there, I think we're going to have a run higher uh, and get higher than 64. If it breaks lower, which I don't know that we're going to, it's come down, it's soaked up the liquidity under here once and double tap twice. Uh, we should start to see higher prices. But keep in mind <clears throat> the US dollar is gaining strength, which is going to put pressure on commodities. Uh, so we could see this trade a little bit softer yet. Um, but you kind of see how price really stopped the bodies of these candles failed to go through that uh, 5890 level uh, here. So that could be technically support, um, you know, uh, that we were looking at there. And we may not see prices drop much lower than what they have here. 
um, but this is this market definitely has traded off uh, quite a bit from these highs in here. So we're going to see what's going to happen. The crude inventories this week should put this thing either higher or lower. It's going to go one way. Uh, so I'm going to wait for crude inventories to come in. But in the short term, I think we've taken the liquidity out on the downside, and I think we're going to see price trade higher into earlier into the week. And then from there, we're going to see what it wants to do. If it's either going to want to uh, roll over and come lower into here, or just continue higher. Um, so we'll be watching for price uh, at the 62.60 level and uh, see where it wants to go from there. So we'll come back to that one. Um, copper, there's nothing on copper that I'm too interested in. Uh, if price bounces from here, I would expect it to come back up into this area here, but this is just really ugly trading in my opinion. Uh, price just does not seem to want to go higher here right now. Um, and it's sold off uh, towards the end of last week there, but nothing in copper that I'm too interested in trading. Uh, cocoa, it, had, it hit my level last Thursday, uh, screamed through it actually, and uh, I was looking for an entry, uh, for, you can see uh, down here, I was hoping price would have came back down, uh, tagged off this blue line, and I was looking for a long, didn't get it, so we're going to have to um, uh, put the brakes on this uh, commodity uh, cocoa for now. Uh, I was very, very bullish on this, and I was actually bullish in it back here, uh, but it, it kind of ugly price trading in here, really, really choppy, it's not nice, not nice clean price action in there, so... Um, I did get into some longs back in here that I had put signals out for, but they had come back down and just really didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, so I canceled that trade and then uh, price traded out and it, I missed an entry down in here that I was looking at and just skyrocketed from there. So unfortunately, I, I have been bullish on this pair. I was calling higher price um, for Coco um, about 60 days ago, but unfortunately we didn't get an entry on it. So we'll have to uh, sit on the sidelines on that one. Um, coffee, this is interesting. Uh, we had a failure to come down and uh, take out this low here on coffee. Uh, so we could have had a potential failure swing and we could see higher prices in Sue on coffee. Now this pair typically this time of year um, isn't very bullish. Uh, you can see we have are trapped in a bit of a uh, sort of a wedge formation I guess with this. So we're going to see which way price wants to break out but I think that um, if price wants to get higher than here, we could see higher prices. And there's a couple of equal highs up in here that I'd like to see uh, get tagged out. I don't know how realistic it is because we are starting to run out of time. Uh, again, this uh, commodity typically goes bearish uh, this time of year. So um, we, we'll see. Uh, if we get a reaction off here higher, we could be able to get into a long and we could um, you know, see price try to trade up into this area in here. Um, this 124, 125 level. Uh, so we'll watch for that. If I see a signal, I will put that one out because we could have a failure swing here. So it could be a nice trade, but we'll watch for that one. If a trade does happen, it would be very, very quick. Um, cotton, again, uh, bullish on this one here. And I was looking for price to reject at this level here, but it really didn't put a lot of effort into it until this one day here, two weeks ago. And price exploded off of this level. I wanted to see a break and retest to come down. We didn't get it. We had one shallow retracement candle and then again exploded higher. Uh, <clears throat> I think this level up here probably could be a, a good level of interest uh, for price to uh, run up to, but I don't want to be buying it at this level here. I'd like to see price come back down to this level here one more time uh, before I'd be interested in getting along. So we'll watch for that one. I am bullish though on that one. Uh, I think we will see these highs up here <clears throat> get tagged off. And then sugar, uh, sugar came through and took out the old low right here. We had a failure swing and I thought that might have been it, uh, but then price got smashed down and took out the low here, soaked up the liquidity and then had an instant rejection. Uh, this was Friday's candle here. This would have been a nice trade to get long on, but it's, it's a little bit scary because it did not really want to come through these levels in here. So we could see lower prices on sugar. Uh, so there's no trade on sugar yet that I'm looking at, but if price wants to break out of here, um, we're basically going to see failures in, in and around this level. Let's grab this here. We should see failures in and around this level here. Um, so I'll just maybe put a level somewhere right around here. Uh, price should not be really too interested in going lower than here. <clears throat> and if I see that happen, then we could get long and we could see a higher prices. I'd be looking for these um, highs up here to be taken out. So we'll watch that on sugar. And then orange juice. I'd like to see a pop on orange juice. Uh, we do see typically bullish, uh, moderately bullish uh, to sideways price action in, in orange juice. And then later on here in the next couple of months, um, orange juice tends to get very, very bullish. So 
Uh, we will see what happens, uh, but this could be a nice level for a long in here. I'm going to watch how this price opens up on Monday. And uh, so just watch for a trade. We could be getting long here. Uh, what would uh, prevent a long signal from coming out, obviously, is if price came in and it wanted to get lower than this uh, 135 level in here. Um, that would negate any long entry ideas for me on this pair. But if we start to see a reaction happen here and, and bouncing occur, then price may not even get any lower than what it is. It could just right out of the gate money to start trading higher. Um, we'll be looking at getting in on longs there. So I'm actually interested in trying a, sm a small position, maybe one contract on this one for a long. And uh, But I want to see what happens in here. I want to see price open up and see if we have any willingness to go lower. Um, there'd be some logical levels down here that I'd be looking at where we could get higher and I'd be looking for these highs to get tagged out. Uh, but we got to watch because we did have some rejection in here. We had rejection and then a failure swing and price came lower. So they either want to come down, soak up some liquidity under here and then run it higher uh, or it could be a breakdown completely. So if again, if this level here gets broken, then we're going to see lower prices. So I want I don't want to just go buy it in here yet. I want to see if they have willingness to reject this level and then we'll get in long. So. We'll watch for that. Uh, and that is really about it. Uh, again, FOMC coming in on uh, Friday. Uh, non or not, sorry, FOMC. Uh, Non-farm payroll on uh, Friday. Uh, so there won't be any trading Thursday or Friday this week. All the trades will be coming out <clears throat> Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you can watch for that. And uh, we'll update you again uh, coming into New York Open on Monday. So hope you guys had a great Sunday. Uh, good luck trading this week coming up. And... Uh, Remember, reduce your risk as well, too, because uh, markets can be a little bit volatile uh, pre-non-farm um, uh, numbers uh, on towards the end of the week. So just be careful with your trading. Uh, take short uh, positions, short targets, you know, 30, 40 pips, and uh, call it a day trading. If you get that, uh, then just go, uh, go flat for the rest of the day and, and, you know, look for very small, short duration setups for the week is really what I'm trying to say. So... Okay, thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, uh, just uh, jump onto the chat and uh, ask those um, on there. We'll be doing live sessions again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. Uh, so you can watch for those. The first one coming in on uh, Tuesday morning, London Open. Uh, so watch for that. Okay, thanks guys. We'll see you then.